Last year, I did a video on the 996 Porsche Carrera, which is from 1998 to 2004. I didn't do a very good job making the video, and the sound was terrible. There was wind noise in the background, and the volume wasn't very good. So many comments came on asking me to redo it. So here we go. The purpose of this video is for uh, is to provide some information for people who are potentially thinking about investing in one of these cars or just want to know a little bit more about this generation of the Porsche 996. So I'll start by giving some sort of background. The 996 was the first water-cooled iteration of the Porsche 911 Carrera. Everything before then was air-cooled. There was a bit of an uproar from some uh, Porsche aficionados about the fact that the car was now water-cooled. They felt it was a betrayal of the, the uh, lineage and the history of the car and so on. But the reason that Porsche did uh, redesign the engine was it was running into emissions standards which are becoming stricter and it needed to improve performance. And the water-cooled platform enabled them to do both, the, both of those things. And of course forevermore the Porsche 911 engine will be water-cooled. Now <clears throat> the air-cooled engines are fantastic and the air-cooled Porsches are beautiful uh, and in fact more valuable than the 996. But the 996 is on paper, well in the world, faster and lighter and more agile. Alright, so that's, the, uh, that's the, the basics. Now my car is powered by a 300 horsepower uh, horizontally opposed 6. Of course all of the Carreras are powered by flat 6's, which means two banks of three cylinders. And um, the next generation of the 996, which is called the Mark II, which is in 2002, was 320 horsepower. The displacement went up from 3.4 liters to 3.6 liters. The configuration of the engine changed a little bit. Uh, the uh, chains, it went from being what's called a five-chain engine to a three-chain engine. The, the difference was the five-chain engine, which is this car, from, from essentially 98 to 2002. The, there's a chain that goes from the crank pulley down to the intermediate shaft, and then, a, then uh, two more chains that go up to a small uh, pulley uh, on the heads, and then two more chains which turn around and, and spin the camshafts. Now, uh, the, one of the issues that people have, or questions I suppose that people have about the car is, is it reliable? Um, how much do I have to spend to maintain it and so on? Now I've done another video, which I'll, I'll post a link so you can get to the other video, in which I kind of go over the, the maintenance costs have been associated with this car, um, and so you get a sense of some of the costs that you may incur. In generally, or in general, the cars are very reliable and durable, and they like to be driven hard, and they're built for driving hard, which by which I mean, you know, revving them out and driving them fast. So. The, the, the whole design of Porsche is to permit owners to drive their cars fast and so they're built to endure a lot of, uh, a lot of punishment. Anecdotally, Porsche mechanics will tell you that the cars that seem to break the, the least are the cars which are driven the most. The one headline issue with the Porsche 911 Carrera from the 996 vintage, and to much lesser extent the 997, is that is something called the IMS bearing. Now, from the crankshaft down to the intermediate shaft uh, was a chain, and the intermediate shaft was uh, where the chains going to the heads to drive the cams are. Now, <clears throat> one end of that um, shaft is supported by a bearing, a ball, uh, a bearing with a race and ball bearings. In a very low percentage of cars, that bearing would fail. If it failed, there would be problems usually resulting in an engine rebuild or replacement. Now, there's no hard data on what the percentage of cars that failed, uh, where the IMS failed. Uh, some peg it at between 1 and 3 percent, some a little bit higher, um, but we don't know for sure. 
what we do know is that there are lots of high mileage 911s uh, in the 996 vintage. And this goes for the, the Boxster as well, the 986, which is essentially the identical engine, just a smaller displacement. Uh, where there's lots of high mileage versions of these cars which are still running on the uh, original bearing and even when it's taken out people learn that it's, it's doing quite well. So um, it's not an emergency repair. What most people will say is the sensible thing to do is upgrade that bearing when you are changing the clutch in the car because it requires removal of the transmission to access it. Um, and there's a company in the States called LN Engineering, and LN makes an upgraded, ro more robust bearing, uses uh, a ceramic ball bearing, and uh, it's generally just a heavier duty or harder wearing bearing, and people have had a lot of success with them. And um, other than a couple of anecdotal uh, stories about them failing, I think they're, they're pretty robust and bulletproof. So probably a good idea to get that repair done or just to find a car that's already had it done because when you, when you look at the advertisements, you'll find, I don't know, if it's half of them, half of the cars have had the upgrade done, all right? Other than that, the car is reliable. I've had, this is my third year with this, uh, just oil changes for me so far uh, with a couple of other things. Now, if you look at my, uh, the maintenance video, you'll see some of the things that I've had to do, um, relatively minor things. Um, and things that I, everything that I've been able to do myself. The only thing I've had done by, by the Porsche mechanics is to uh, replace the seat element, the heating element in the driver's seat. Uh, everything else I've done myself, oil changes, um, and uh, I, I had the starter rebuilt, I pulled it up myself, uh, and um, a couple other uh, odds and sods, okay? So, but other than that, the car starts perfectly, runs beautifully every time. Um, now, in terms of aesthetics, the car uh, is essentially indistinguishable by most people from other Porsche 911s. Uh, you may be able to tell the difference. I can tell the difference being a, a bit of a Porsche nut. But the, the main thing that was criticized from the exterior, at least, was the headlight. Now, the headlight was actually taken from the GT1 race car, which won Le Mans in 1998. If you Google that, you'll see what the headlights on that car look like. And they're essentially the same headlights they put on the 911 uh, and also the Boxster. Um, the interior is criticized, the aesthetics in the interior, and uh, they do look, by today's standards, they look a bit dated. Uh, but what I can say about the interior is when you're driving the car, you won't notice it. And the reason you won't notice is because um, the ergonomics are so good. The seat is well built, the leather is of good quality, they're well bolstered, uh, the, the, the pedal positions for heel and toe shifts are good, and the gear lever, um, especially if you have a short shift kit uh, installed, is, uh, is terrific. So um, for most, I think, 996 owners, the interior is not really, uh, is not a, a, a major issue. The other thing that people want to know, and what I wanted to know before I, I bought one was, well, what's it like to drive? And the answer is it's terrific. Uh, the car's fast. It's got 300 horsepower, weighs about 3,000 pounds, goes from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just over 5 seconds, uh, top speed of 175 miles an hour. It is, uh, uh, but I think the thing that makes a Porsche special uh, is, I mean, yes, it's fast, but the thing that makes it special is the chassis because the car is so precise and handles so well, uh, and um, uh, the responsiveness of the engine. The sound of the engine, so the flat six, uh, you hear about the flat six uh, howl, and my car has the Porsche Sports exhaust on it, so it sounds terrific. Um, and it likes to rev, most of the power comes on after 3500 RPM, so when you're driving the car hard, you're keeping it in the upper rev ranges, and it sounds great. Um, so I think that's, um, that's about it for the summary. You can post questions and comments, which um, I will try and get the information for you if I can. Um, I have a couple of good reference books, um, which um, uh, one's by an author called Adrian Streather, and he's, I think, a British fella who has written sort of the, the uh, authoritative uh, book on the 996 series, which he tackles uh, most every... Uh, conceivable subject associated with the cars and all of the models in the line. 
And then there's another book, I think it's called 101 Projects for the Porsche 996 and the 997, which is essentially just a continuation of this. It's essentially the same car with some, uh, with some upgrades. And that's by Wayne Dempsey. And Wayne Dempsey uh, is the fellow who uh, owns Pelican Parts. And so he's got uh, good photographic step-by-steps in that book. So those are two good books to look at if you're interested in, or even if you have a car, then you want to have reference materials around. Uh, so I think that's it. I'll do a little bit of a walk around with the car so you can see what the interior looks like. And, uh, and that's about it. The last thing that I will say about the car in terms of usability, because I get this question too, is can you use this car on a daily basis? The answer is yes. It's very civilized to drive, so you don't need to, uh, you don't need to uh, really work out all that hard to, to press the clutch and, and, and move through the gears, and it's a perfectly uh, great daily driver. It has two small back seats. Really, they're only good for kids. I have kids, and I do school runs in the car, uh, no problem. It has the front trunk, which I'll show you, which is a useful space. You're not going to fit golf clubs in it but it's good for picking up some groceries and, and odds and sods and, and what have you. Um, the front seats are very comfortable and the car is spacious enough to fit, uh, you know, r large -ish people. I'm six feet and, and perfectly comfortable in the car. This is just a walk around video of the Porsche 9, uh, 996 Carrera. This model is my car. It's a 2001. It's in seal gray. You can see the wheels have got the BPS Porsche rims with the Porsche center caps. You can see the headlight configuration, uh, which is uh, one that's often commented on by people that don't like the 996. They don't like the headlight. To me, I don't think it's much of, a, uh, much of an issue. This is the trunk compartment. You can see you've got this, the um, mini spare inside. And this is the battery compartment. Uh, and um, yeah, that's about all you need to know. You can fit probably, I don't know, probably four, uh, four good sized bags of groceries in there. If you want to do a little bit of shopping with the car, you can, it's no problem. Get in the car and I'll start it up. So you can see the dial configuration uh, is the same or very similar to uh, the way it's always been and with the, the rev counter attack right in the middle so that you can see, uh, watch your revs as you're going through the gears. The car likes to rev um, and has no trouble going to 7,000 RPM. I kind of will shift at six and a half thousand RPM uh, if I'm in a hurry to get somewhere. But as I say, the, the, the power really comes on at three and a half thousand or four thousand uh, RPM, and the the, uh, the engine makes a terrific sound. So I'll start the car, car up so you can hear it a bit. As you can see, the key is in the left hand side rather than the right, and the the reason for that is because in the the old timey Le Mans races. They used to have a, what they called a running start, and the, the race car drivers would have to run across the racetrack, jump in the cars, and, uh, and then start them and get going. So Porsche put the, the um, ignition on the left so the driver could work the gear shift with the right hand and turn the key with the left hand to give them an advantage, and they've kept it that way in the cars, a bit of a... Um, I guess a bit of a, an, a tribute to the, uh, the historical race uh, Porsche cars. And incidentally, uh, when people travel water-cooled, the, the GT1, which, is the, which was the 1998 Le Mans winner for Porsche, was a water-cooled race engine. So here's the, the car. Now, before I rev it, and I, I got um, chastised by somebody in the comments about revving the car 
while it was cold. Um, actually, I've just got home with a car, so it's warm. Um, but um, you're not going to hurt. Uh, you're not going to hurt your 996 by giving it a little rev while it's in neutral. Um, you'll see there's um, for the dials. You've got uh, oil pressure on the far right. Uh, you've got temperature in the fuel gauge, the tachometer in the middle, speedometer, and then your voltage on the far uh, on the far left. You can see that uh, for the uh, the dash itself. Um, people criticize these buttons here because they're kind of shiny. I, I have a friend who has a 996 Turbo, 2003, and Porsche, I think, responded to the criticism by making these sort of more matte, which I think looks nicer. Uh, the uh, the cup holders are an option in the car, and they work fine. They're not going to work for your giant lattes from Starbucks, uh, but they work fine for your sort of regular size drinks. It's got a little bit of a change holder there, um, and these are your window switches, and it's got another little little cubby here. Uh, the Mark One does not have a glove box, and the Mark Two they put a glove box in here, and it's a pretty small glove box, really just for your insurance papers and whatnot. My car has uh, heated seats as well, which is uh, good because, uh, of course, in um, north of the border, it gets a little cool. So I'll just uh, hold the phone out here a little bit so you can hear the engine. Now that's the that's the Porsche Sports exhaust, and um, it does sound terrific when you're uh, running the car through the gears. All right, uh, I think that's about it. And if you have questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks.